just bought like, you have like three pairs now? Mm. Today I'm going to be going over my experience at the Pasadena Rose Bowl Flea Market, better known as the Rose Bowl Flea Market. I've been meaning to go there for a handful of years now, probably since the beginning of college, and it just was hard to figure it out. But finally, after four or five years of wanting to go, I finally got to go. Today in this video, it's gonna be pretty much a Rose Bowl Flea Market 101 for a first time beginner. Obviously, I've only gone once, so I just feel like this is a good way to see what to expect for a first timer, prices, what to bring. And I know there's a lot of videos of people thrifting there and their vlogs, so it's kind of like that, but also just a first time perspective and things that maybe I would consider now that I've been there. And I actually really enjoyed it. I would definitely go again. It only happens once a month, so I don't know when I'll be able to go again. And to be honest with how hot it was, I would probably wait a couple of months before I wanted to go. Um, and I also want to try out a few other flea markets, so maybe I'll do videos on those, like the Long Beach one that happens every third Sunday, which I just missed, so maybe next month. And then also the Melrose Trading Post, which I've done, but I didn't do a video on it, so maybe I'll do that. This is a good indicator of kind of what the Melrose Trading Post looks like, except on a scale much, much, much larger. If you guys are interested in my experience and some of my tips, and just if you wanted to see another video on the flea market, then keep watching. Okay, I talk a lot in my videos and I'm already starting to sweat, so I'm going to try to make this as concise and quick and painless as possible for both of us. <laughs> so I'm going to try to run down all of the basic information and then go into my experience and then a haul. So if you're interested in one part or another, I'll try to leave timestamps or I won't. And you're going to have to watch the whole thing. We'll see. I hope you guys watch the whole thing, so maybe I just won't leave any timestamps. But we're going to start off with some basic information. So the Rose Bowl Flea Market happens every second Sunday of each month. If you're ever unsure for whatever reason when the second Sunday is, they always have a calendar online of events and when the flea market happens. So if you're not really sure, just look online. It always has it listed. And it's located in Pasadena, California at the Rose Bowl Stadium. And if you guys are unfamiliar, if you're not from California, it's in LA County, but it's not like Hollywood, Beverly Hills, anything like that. LA County is ginormous. You can just put Rose Bowl Stadium into Google Maps and it'll direct you right to where you need to be. It should lead you right to the stadium and you'll figure out if you're in the right place because there's going to be lines going down the hill. And I wouldn't be too intimidated by the lines because they all funnel to the same place and it's kind of like Disneyland where they fill you into wherever there's space unless you want to do VIP parking, which is different, and I'll go over that in my parking section. But most people will just want free parking, so just follow the line, they'll lead you where you need to be. It's free parking, which is, it's a tiny bit of a walk, but honestly, for free parking, I'm, just, I'm surprised they even get free parking. Most places charge 15, 20 bucks, and I'm not about that. Knowing very well that the items at the flea market are going to be overpriced for big shirts which i will get to in my haul where they're funneling you is going to be the free parking i'm sure you could ask someone where the vip parking is um, but there's going to be two types of parking for you know normal people um, that doesn't include like big buses and vendors and stuff i'm not going to go into that i have no idea how any of that works but vip parking is 15 dollars, and then general admission free parking is zero dollars okay now that you've parked, you gotta get in. So it's gonna be a little bit of a walk from the free parking. Then you're gonna see windows where they're selling tickets. Trent and I just got the $9 general admission tickets. You're allowed to buy those at 9 a.m. And the Rose Bowl flea market is from 9 a.m. to tentatively three. That's when people start packing up, but I think you can still stay there to get last minute deals past three. Um, but general admission opens at 9 a.m. and tickets are gonna be $9 a piece, no tax, and bring cash. Ooh, $2 bill. What's up? Ooh. I should have mentioned that in the beginning, but for everything, make sure you have a pile of cash. People do accept card, but just to be safe when you're paying for your ticket, it's cash, as well as a lot of the vendors prefer cash. 
If you're looking to get in a little bit earlier, they actually do offer prices to get in earlier. VIP is gonna be from 5 to 7 a.m. and that's gonna be $25 per person. Early bird is from 7 to 8 a.m. and that's gonna be $18 per person. And then express admission is gonna be from 8 to 9 a.m. and that's $14 per person. So if you wanna go in earlier to see some deals, you can also do that. Um, but not all vendors are open and set up by that time. So I feel like the best bang for your buck is still gonna be the $9. Just get there right at 9 a.m. and you should be fine. And something to note, it looks like there's a ton of people and there is, and there's some areas that got a little bit more crowded, but there are so many vendors at the flea market that there's room for everyone. Like, there's so many vendors, there's so many places for you to be eating, shopping, so don't be too intimidated by seeing a lot of people because there's room for everyone to walk in, you're fine, don't worry about it. Oh, it's getting hot in here. It's literally like, it's reminding me of when I went to the flea market because I was sweating like a pig. Food. So the market special at the flea market is $3 for a hot dog and a drink, which I don't think is bad at all. Um, generally, the prices weren't too bad. I Don't quote me because I know this is wrong, but their website says the food ranges from like $3 to $14 or something similar to that. I don't think the food was super, super overpriced. Maybe a little bit of a markup, but I didn't think it was anything super ridiculous or anything that I wasn't already anticipating. But I did get a hot dog and that was $2. That was the first thing we ate. And then we also got lemonade, pupusas, uh, agua fresca, lemonade. Did I say lemonade? I did say lemonade. <laughs> and tamales. And I think that was it. I'll have video footage in it right now. But all the food was like pretty decent. There wasn't anything that I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Or, oh my God, that was horrible. The cheese, the jalapeno and cheese tamale was pretty good. I would try that. Uh, but we didn't get to try everything. Those are just a couple of things that we got to eat. And I, the food is kind of scattered around. When you get in, there's a little area that already has food. But if you walk around, there's little food vendors in different places. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all your basic foods. I don't think all of the vendors that they listed online for food were there. But make sure you look online to see what you're kind of looking for. I feel like it helps when you're looking around um, just so that you know what you're aiming to eat. And they don't ban you from bringing your own food, so if you have any food preferences or you don't want to buy food and save money, you can always bring your food in. So no need to worry about that. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention is that there's no pets, so sorry for all your furry friends. You're gonna have to leave them at home. Um, I think it's just like a sanitary and a safety issue, so if you have any pets, don't bring them. They're not allowed in. Okay, I feel like this is a fun part that people have actually been waiting for. So the vendors, how is it? But like I mentioned earlier, how it's lined up is that there is a stadium, there's vendors around it. So when T and I first went in, we thought that was it. We were like, wow, there's no one here. Like, was this worth it? And so we went around and then we were like, mm. I kind of just wanted to browse a little bit and see. I was a little bit disappointed, so we ate because we were ravished, starving, hungry, like hangry. So we ate first, um, got a little bit of food, and then I was like, oh, let's walk into this corner that we didn't see. And then, boom, my world opened. And there was vendors on vendors on vendors. And then you get into the next section. So it looks like an exit, but really it's just the next section of clothes. So the first section has like a mix of furniture, clothes, and then you get into the next one. And that's more a lot of like vintage clothing is. The stuff that hypey people like me and YouTubers and influencers and Instagram people and trendy teens everywhere are looking for, which I would hate to say, but that is just the reality of it. Sorry, I'm sweating. I feel like I'm at the Rose Bowl flea market again. Sweaty boo. I can't even like focus, it's so hot. I know. I know. I'm like, I'm Ooh, my face is sweating off. Boo's about to pass out. <laughs> I drink water, boo. It's so hot today in SoCal. Okay. Whew, and I've been filming for a while. So you get in and there is, if right away, denim on denim on denim, there is no shortage of vintage Levi's, vintage Wranglers, shorts, overalls, this and that. Everything you've seen on social media, it's there with their overpriced prices. 
tea and shade right there. But we all, you know that going in. So if you are surprised that you're buying a $50 pair of shorts or a $100 pair of Levi's jeans, like, you should have known. Yeah, that's one section you need to go in. And then there's actually bridges that connect you to another section. It's crazy how big it is. Like, you can already hear it in my voice where I'm just like rapidly talking, but so it's like the first circle and then you go out, then there's this whole big area of clothes and other stuff, but mostly clothes. And then there's like bridges that connect you to yet another section of more clothes, more dresses, furniture, books. There's a wide variety of stuff. I would still say that clothes makes up the majority of the flea market, but there is little places that have antiques, different books, trinkets. So make sure you walk around but keep in mind that you will not see everything. There is no way, even if you go out there at 5 a.m. until like that 3 p.m., there's just no way that you can look through everything. So don't feel too bad. Just, you know, kind of look around. There was some places that had jean shorts and you know, they're like 50 to $100, but then you can look around at other places that have them for 15 to 25. So if you just take the time to look and walk around, you could find a deal. But at the same time, because you're at a vintage flea market you won't find the same item twice so it is some risk in buying stuff and flipping your coin and thinking about how much you love something but there are places that sell vintage t-shirts for literally like a hundred dollars i saw someone's video where there was a vintage jacket for like 750 dollars and i was like hell no but if you walk around, like one of the shirts that I got, which I'll show you later, it's a Rolling Stones t-shirt. And I got mine for 15, but I saw the same shirt somewhere else and it was like $50 and I liked mine more. So do a little bit of shopping. There's gonna be a little bit of risk involved, but don't feel too bad if you paid a little bit more, but also make sure you, you do a little bit of walking around. Um, so that's what I will say about it. Not everything is completely overpriced but you do have to look and it's not like there's like exact, exact duplicates of everything. So don't be too discouraged that everything's gonna be expensive because it's not, but a lot of it is like ripped off thrift store clothes. But you know, that's what we're all about these days. I think overall, I still had a really good time shopping around at the different vendors, trying stuff on. I felt really pressured to buy stuff and I did because I already drove all the way from Orange County, paid to get in and spent my time there. So I bought a couple of things, but I definitely want to go again and do a little bit more shopping. All right, some tips. I actually didn't think these through. So this is just going to be straight off the top of my head and I'm sure I'm going to miss stuff. First thing, wear comfortable clothes. A lot of people wear cute, trendy clothes, but if you're really looking into the mindset of potentially trying stuff on buying stuff, um, and it's summertime, just wear like a tank top and something easy. I had a skirt on, so it was easy to try stuff on. Um, if you're going to, during the winter time, it's a different story, but wear comfortable clothes and shoes. You are going to be doing a hell of a lot of walking. Um, I recommend bringing a reusable water bottle or a hydro flask or a drink or something. Even during the winter time, because you're doing a lot of walking and if it's the summer and it's blazing hot, you don't want to get dehydrated. Trent was miserable. Even with us having water and eating and having extra drinks, it just was so hot. Um, if you're going during the summertime, like next month in August, maybe bring a fan. I was going to bring a Filipino pamaypay and I did it and I had regrets. I know some people bring umbrellas. Um, just be prepared for the weather you're going to be in. If you know it's going to be raining, bring a rain jacket, bring an umbrella. Bring a reusable bag. A lot of vendors do have plastic bags, but for as much as you can, please try to use your own reusable bag. Um, I had a couple of them and it's just easier to bring because they're more sturdy. And again, bring cash, very important. Um, I would bring a couple of different kinds of bills. Like I would mix it up with like 20s, 5s, 1s. Most vendors will have different kinds of bills, but you never know because they do run out with giving people change. And I actually, I think that's like pretty much it. Have fun. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, a big part of the fun of this is just being able to shop and look and hang out with whoever you're with. Have an open mind, just like if you're at a thrift store. You know, look at everything, walk around, enjoy yourself. It's an experience. It's shopping, but it's also an experience. Okay, now the fun, fun part, the haul, which I actually didn't even buy that many things, but again, I felt pressured because I was already there. Okay, so I got three things, and 
they weren't things I was looking to buy, but I did. I was so mesmerized by all the shorts and everything, and I was just so lazy to try stuff on, and some of the shorts were just so expensive, but I've actually worn, oh, there's a hole in it. It's okay, whatever. So I've worn the two first things that I got, and I haven't worn the last one. The first thing, like you guys heard earlier, is this Rolling Stones t-shirt. I got it for $15. And don't even come after me for how much I paid for these things because I know they're old ratty t-shirts, but it's the name of the game. I knew going in, but I thought it'd be like 50 bucks, but I just found a hole in it and I'm sad, but I love how worn up, like worn out it is. It's like the perfect amount of worn out. I found another one at the flea market, but I just, I'm glad I got this one, but it's $15 and the ladies were super nice and I then mowed them. So it's a big oversized t-shirt. I love it. I never thought to have t-shirts. Trent was like, oh, just get it. it. Like you don't have too many things like that. And I'm so glad that I did get it because it just has that nice casual look. Um, and I just wear it with like shoes or my sandals and shorts. And it's a really great summer look. And bonus, I can wear it to sleep. So, <laughs> and then I got another t-shirt. This is from the Disneyland Resort like line or like from Disney. And it's a large and men's. And a funny story is I went out with my friends yesterday to Korean barbecue. This is really stinky because of Korean barbecue, but we ended up going to Salt and Straw in Disney after, and I was coincidentally wearing this. And I've also worn this to sleep, so it's gotten some love already. I got this for $7. And I can actually wear it without shorts, but I'm trying to be an adult now. And the last thing that I got from the same place that I got that Disney shirt from was this dress. It was also $7. And it reminds me of just like a Reformation, Revolve kind of dress. It's a maxi, has some frills at the bottom. Only thing is it's pretty see-through, so I need to figure that out. But I still really love it. It's so girly, it's in my favorite color, and I, I love the peasant tea vibe to it. Those are the three things that I got. And I recommend going to that one place. I wish I had more time and I wish Trent wasn't being a baby because he was overheating. I'm just kidding. I health first. Uh, but there was this big vendor where there was a bunch of vintage shorts that weren't too expensive and they had racks and racks and racks of dresses, 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 and like my type of thrift store dresses. I love the thrift store. I've been thrifting since like freshman year of high school. A lot of my wardrobe's thrifted, so that was just my mecca and then the shirts were four oh it was seven dollars for shirt for the shirts seven dollars for dresses but i think they had the deal on shirts where it was like four for 20 or five for 20. i think it was four for 20. so it'd be five dollars for a shirt but i just didn't find that many i almost just tried to get a bunch of stuff and then i had to stop myself and be like are you buying it because you like it or are you buying it because there's a deal so i stopped myself but next time I go, I'm definitely gonna stop by. It's this huge tent, I think in the third section, if you keep going in. I know the Rose Bowl flea market is huge, but if you see it, there's a big sign. I recommend checking it out. Um, I didn't really like the guy who was checking me out. Not like checking me out, like checking me out. He was, didn't have a really good attitude. So that's the only reason why I wouldn't wanna go back, but I like their clothes, so yeah. That's gonna be my haul today. That was my experience. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope that you learned something out of it um, and that you maybe decide to go. Uh, let me know. If you're one of my friends, I'm down to go again. I'm actually busy all of September and um, maybe August. So if y'all wanna go in October, hit a girl up. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys on my next video. My wings are getting better, right? Just so you know. I